Welcome back to The Michael Brooks Show. I'm Michael Brooks. Joining us now, it's really an honor. We recorded this a couple of days ago before the Tuesday show, and we're breaking format a little bit so we can play this, is Councilwoman Shama Sawant from Seattle. She is currently seeking her third term. She's in her second term right now uh, and has really achieved and helped build some extraordinary things in Seattle. And I want all of us to do what we can to help secure her reelection. Uh, you told me before to call you Shama instead of Councilwoman. So Shama, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Michael. Can you tell us how you've used your office in Seattle as a socialist to build out a broader base of popular power? Yes, I think starting from our very first campaign for city council in 2013, we have shown that it is possible to run an election campaign as something that is deeply rooted in the broader struggle of working people, of the marginalized, and to have a candidate, to run a candidate who's accountable to those very same mo movements, uh, who runs a campaign taking zero from corporate donors, running the campaign purely on the basis of grassroots donation from ordinary people who are engaging in self-sacrifice to donate to the campaign, and then remaining uh, remaining loyal to social movements and working people once you win elected office. And the way you do it, and this is what we have demonstrated to our example, the way you do it is by understanding, by having a very clear political analysis that the, the strength that you base yourself on is on uh, it, it comes from a vast majority of ordinary people who are fed up and angry with the status quo of corporate dominated politics, of deep inequality, of having to engage in such difficulties, you know, having to work two and sometimes three jobs just to make ends meet, just to put food on the table while the billionaire class is making out like bandits, especially. Uh, especially glaring is the process of wealth accumulation at the top since the Great Recession in 2008-2009 when millions of ordinary Americans were wiped out through foreclosures, through the ending of many middle-class uh, level jobs and uh, most of the younger generation being relegated to very low-wage jobs. And so what we have shown is that it is possible to get elected in the first place on that basis, on a basis of completely rejecting the conventional corporate politics rule book, and, and then after winning office to not uh, have, no, no, having not sold out to big business interests, not having made backroom deals with corporate polit politicians, and yet not being marginalized and isolated. So, you know, in, in conventional politics, you know, when you hear political pundits throughout, in, and, I, and I don't just mean right-wing political pundits. Uh, absolutely, they have a, a very, uh, they have a, they have a very, um, uh, they have a neoliberal approach to thinking about politics, but it's also uh, what we see coming from the democratic establishment that, and, and something that is out of touch with what rank-and-file Democrats want, which is the possibility of having elected representatives who remain true to the needs of ordinary working people, are, remain unbought by corporate interests, and are yet able to make an impact. And that's where I think the real contribution of my council office lies, which is that we not only got elected by defeating a six powerful 16-year Democratic Party establishment incumbent in the city, on the city council, but after we won, within six months of me winning the election, by helping to build a broad basis in among Seattle's working people and with the labor movement and with community organizations, we were able to make Seattle the first major city to win the $15 minimum wage, which, as you know, has, has, has now gone uh, nationwide That's right. since then. And the 15 now campaign that we launched here has uh, been adopted by working people in many other cities. 
And I believe uh, now it has been reported that 22 million American workers have attained $15 an hour, which has meant a raise in their incomes by $68 billion. I mean, this is tremendous. Look at the impact you can have. And then in addition to that, we have won a whole host of renters' rights victories. Mm -hmm. We have that has angered corporate real estate. We we ended Columbus Day and ushered in Indigenous Peoples Day. And right now we are building a powerful movement for rent control. So I think this is an example of where, where the left among us in the movements, progressives need to understand that there's a huge opening and we can harness the hunger for change and actually win progressive victories. Well, I'm incredibly, I think especially I want to say, I mean, all of those are incredibly important fights, but rent control to me, and I'm incredibly encouraged by Bernie Sanders' housing proposals and the, and your pioneering work uh, and your office and the movements you've mobilized are directly in relationship with the sort of broader potentialities that have emerged in the last several years through the Sanders campaign and through other social movements. You just watched a Michael Brooks show video. Subscribe to get them all. Why wouldn't you? Don't be foolish. Click subscribe below and become a patron as well. Patreon.com slash TMBS.